Hello, my name's Mike. Come on into my office. There's something I want to show you. Check this out. Yeah, the tree's nice and all, but did you notice? I've got a busted string. We're going to restring the shade, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Stay tuned. actually got a few months out of it. This is what it looks like now. When you take down your blind, it's a good idea to have your vacuum or a wet rag ready because most likely your blind will be dusty. It's a good idea to take pictures of any labels that are on the blinds. If you find you have broken parts, the label information will help you source them. Ideally, your workspace should be twice as wide as your blind, so you have room to slide off the top and bottom rails. You'll need a roll of lift cord. I started the project with this one millimeter cord, but it stretched too much. So I called the manufacturer and they said my blind used 1.8 millimeter cord. So I suggest you call the manufacturer and ask before buying. The first step to restringing your blind is to remove the existing pull cord. We're going to start a little parts bin. There we go. We'll be saving this main pull, which we'll use later. I put rubber bands down here just to hold that in place, which means right now I can get rid of these shoelaces. There are some end caps. They just come out with uh, finger power. I can take off the rubber bands. I'm going to hold the cloth and we're going to slide off the bottom rail. So you can see, here's the bottom. The string comes out in three places. The string comes out here. So they tie a loop and they have a button in the center and down here. Um, the other thing that you can see across here are there's these metal weights. These metal weights is what pulls down the bottom of the shade. And over here, we have a Phillips screw. So this screw is going to need to come out. And what we need to do then is we're going to slide off this top rail off of the cloth, cloth shade. This is the, uh, the clutch. This is the brake that holds onto the strings. When you pull it one way, it locks. When you pull it the other way, it releases. This is what holds the shade up and down. So what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can slide this off. So this pops out, it's got two retaining wings, so we'll just push that wing in, see if we can disengage it, push a little bit on one side, a bit on the other. And it pops out. And now with that off, Okay, there we go. Top rail is off. Pay attention to parts that are coming off. Um, we just had this little, I guess you'd call it a grommet, a little guide. Um, this came off the top. I'm sure that the string was going through it. Let's harvest our washers. I'm just gonna cut that off. A little plastic washer. In the parts bin. Got one more over here. Oh, that one just came right out. That's the broken string. We'll slide that out. The shade has been de-strung. What I want to do now is recompress it and hold it in place. 
So I've just grabbed a handful of speed clamps. We don't need a lot of pressure, just enough to keep it in shape. And if you're using clamps or rubber bands, just make sure that you're not covering up the place where the, uh, the string goes through. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's one of the grommets right there. So we need to make sure that the string is gonna go through the grommet and then we'll tie it off down at the bottom. Just going across my chest and I know that that's about 60 inches. If you wanna know what your span is, grab yourself a tape measure and just pull it out as far as you can. Stretch it across your chest and there you go. That's my reach. 60 inches, exactly five feet. So I know that we have at least five feet. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra just to tie my knot, maybe a foot. And then I'm gonna give myself another healthy dose of maybe, oh, another three feet or so. And I will cut the string. This is going to be in that first part of the shade. Go further away from the pole down to that end, the string needs to get longer and longer because it has to accommodate for the travel across the top of the shade as well. So it's not just going vertically, it's going vertically and horizontally. First thing I'm gonna do is take the piece of string that I cut and I'm going to tie off the little washer, pass it through. Tighten it down, give it a little tug, make sure we haven't made a slipping knot. Now I'm gonna to go to the other end, and this is the end that we are going to pass through the compressed shade. Now, how are we gonna get it through? Well, it's not gonna be easy to push a string, so we're gonna pull it. So here's the plan. I have an old guitar string. I'm just gonna unwind a couple of turns of it. And I need to replace that little brass grommet. So I'm gonna thread the brass grommet on there. And now if our clamps are true, let's see if we can pass this through the hole until it comes out on the bottom. Beautiful. And there it is, can you see that? It just came out on the bottom. I take the smallest little piece of masking tape at the end of my string here. So I'm just gonna tuck that into a nice small little package there. And then kinda half push and half pull it through. And there it is, came right out. Okay, I've got lots of cord here. So the button pulled right up to the bottom. I'm going to reseat that little grommet if I can. Remove the string. Pull off that little bit of tape. And now we're ready to move down there and do the middle hole. I'm gonna pull my string. Okay, that's five feet. And I'll grab another five feet We're going to tie off another washer. Okay, we still have the grommet in place on this side. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing. And I'll check back in with you once the strings are run. As you might notice, I restrung the shade with a thicker cord and cut some of that footage into this video. If your cord is fraying and being difficult, there's a few things you can do. Cutting the cord with shears on a sharp angle will make a point. Wetting the end with a little spit holds the fibers together. Nylon cords can also be melted to keep them from fraying. I squeezed this cord while it was still hot, which worked, but I did burn my fingers a little bit. And if your knots are slipping, a spot of crazy glue on the string will help. Just don't get the glue on the washer or on your fingers. 
our new strings are in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our bottom rail back on. So we know that that's the front because it has the label on there. So my goal here is just to put in the bottom pleat and then those weights. And don't get caught up on those little buttons. So once we get that bottom pleat started, there's a little channel for the weight. Nice, just like that. You want to make sure that it includes the button. And we want to make sure that the pleat, only one pleat is included in the front and the back. So there we go. First button. Put some tension on the button so I can get it past that little button onto the next weight. Let's move the last clamp. We'll just be patient with it, and that's looking pretty even. Very nice. We made it. We're going to put on our end caps. The bottom ones are the small ones, and they are directional. So the little downward bump goes down to match the channel that's there to accept the weights. We need to pull all of the strings down across the top of the shade so they all come out down here at the, uh, the end where the little braking mechanism um, is available. So what we need to do is we want to get the strings down there. We want to be able to slip on the top rail and we want to be able to insert this. So what I think I'm going to do is we're going to replace these clamps with rubber bands. And hopefully the rubber bands will hold the strings in place. And I've already put one rubber band in place all the way down here. So that is holding that string up top where it needs to be. So let's get rid of this clamp. And now I'm going to come all the way down here, right past the middle strings. And let's slip on the second rubber band. And I'm going to hold the string in place right across the top. We'll slide our rubber band down. Okay, so now that's there. We'll be able to take off this clamp. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. And let's slip this on. And there we go. Just out of curiosity, I'd like to see how close did we come? Hey, that's not bad at all. I think this is going to work out just fine. So we're going to leave these long right now. And uh, let's work on getting that top rail in place. I'm going to slide this rail in place, but then I'm going to go a little bit past the shade so I can install the little string clutch here and feed the strings out through it. And then we'll slide it back in place. Uh, before we uh, put on the end caps. So the brake side that goes toward the room. Same deal here. We want to grab just the top pleat, slide the top pleat in place. And I don't want this collapsing on me as I'm working on it. So, and did you see that? Just threw them in the middle just to hold them in place. So we need to put in the little uh, string lock. Here's the bottom of the shade. That little roller points down and the string rides over this. So the string needs to come in here, come down here, and then it kind of goes through here 
Let's see if we can get something a little bit stiffer just to push through here and then we can tie off. There's a hole in the top. Let's see if I can grab the string with the tweezers and we're going to pull it out the top. So there we go. So now we have it through the first part. And now we just have to push it back down and we need to have it come out the top of this roller out the side. And there it is. So we have to remember how this goes together. We'll first need to pass the strings through this hole. Then we can pull them through this assembly and then we can snap this assembly down into place. And we want to pull these strings through. Make sure you have all three of them. There we go. Okay, so now we have the strings coming through this hole. And again, we want to make sure when we put this in that the silver piece is pointing down toward the floor and that the strings are going in the side. Okay, can we squish all these together? First, we'll pull these straight up like that. And now I think I'll have an easier time pulling it straight down. And there it is. Okay, I don't want them to get tangled. Feed it through. Oh, we're so close. And now we can make up the difference here in those lengths. And that's what we want to see. Just like that. We're going to put that aside. Now I'm going to slide that back into place. Now what we need to do is ease this piece back in where it needs to go. And I'm going to use that little, that little wedge I made just to hold down the fabric. There we go. Make sure that the strings don't get tangled. And we'll just rock this in place. Very nice. Come on. There we go. So we're going to rubber band this. There's two more things we need to do. I want to put the end cap on the right side of the top rail and then we're going to put in the uh, silver retaining screw that holds the top rail in place. rubber band and we do that and release it oh man look at that that is a thing of beauty okay so now I'm just going to lightly comb these just making sure there's the right amount of tension on each one that there's no slack in the system okay so we'll need to knot this and cut it. First thing I want to do is we'll pass the strings through this little retainer guy. We're going to knot this and cut it fairly high up so the pull cord also hangs down. So that seems like a good place. So I'm just going to knot it a few times. We'll give the pull lots of meat to grab onto. Now I'm starting to wonder, was there a washer here? That is a beautiful, if not completely messy knot. Definitely some stretch to these cords. So there you go. A complete string replacement on these Bally cellular blinds. Thanks for watching. My name's Mike. The channel is Mike Fixed It. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I welcome you to subscribe. Be good, be well, and be safe. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. I fixed it.